Bonjour, je suis Chris Burns. Hello, I'm Bienvenue Chris Burns, and welcome network. to The Network, where we bring together a network of personalities to get to the core of the subject. But they only have 25 seconds to answer. Let's look at the topic straight away. Some Italians call it a human tsunami, an invasion, a ticking time bomb. Tens of thousands of boat people from North Africa's violent upheaval fill the tiny island of Lampedusa. Hundreds drown trying, others are sent home. Still, the human wave is relentless. Overwhelmed, Italy grants temporary visas, allowing the immigrants to circulate throughout the Schengen area of 25 countries, making up Europe's open internal borders. The action shocks officials in neighboring EU countries, who order tougher border checks and send some immigrants back to Italy. Italian officials angrily contend Europe has abandoned them and muse whether it would be best to part ways. Le peuple tunisien. European Commission President José Manuel Barroso pledges Tunisia help in stopping the exodus and warns the crisis could be hijacked by populist and extremist forces in Europe. Some say it already has, with anti-immigrant parties on the rise. So in this edition of the network, we're linked up with Daniel Endres, the director of the European Office for the UNHCR, the UN's High Commission for Refugees. He's in the studio at the European Parliament. On duplex à Rome. Joining Suad us from Rome is Suad Sabai, an Italian MP and a member of Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi's party, People of Liberty. She's originally from Morocco. And also in the European Parliament studio, Nicolas Grovered, European Affairs correspondent in Brussels for the Daily West of France. He's a specialist in French and European politics. Let's begin with a question for everyone, and I'll begin with Daniel. Has European immigration policy failed? I wouldn't say it has failed, but what we need to see is that there are different rights. There are rights for refugees who need asylum in Europe, and then there is the situation of migrants um, who are coming to Europe in much larger numbers. What we have seen in Italy is about 4,000 more refugee type persons arriving and about 25,000 Tunisians who are traditionally okay. not migrants, uh, not okay, refugees. Daniel. Okay, Daniel, okay, Daniel uh, let's ask Suad, what do you think? Yes, Europe has totally failed on immigration. You can't attack a people and not think of the consequences. The consequences are immigration and exodus, and Italy is in the front line. So the problem, the big problem of immigration, mainly for Sicilians and people on Lampedusa, the myth of Europe virtually doesn't exist anymore. Okay. D'accord. So okay, uh, so uh, Nicholas, who do you think is to blame? Personally, I don't think immigration policy has totally failed. It's the times that have changed. It's not like 20 years ago when immigration was controlled and kept in check. Now we're trying to keep it out. The majority of countries don't want this immigration anymore. The policy was conceived at a given moment, and today there's a new context, so we have to adapt to this context and redo the policy. Okay, Nicola. Okay, Nicola. Uh, back to Suad. Is there a kind of cold war between European countries? For example, demonstrations against other EU workers in Britain. There are quotas for Bulgarians and Romanians there. Is there a cold war at the moment? Yes, I'm afraid there is a Cold War. The main problem is we are well prepared for war, for attacking people, preparing revolutions in North Africa, but we are not prepared for the consequences, for immigration. I say again, the consequences. Thanks, Suad. Daniel, who's to blame? Well, I think one thing is I would agree with. One would, have, one would do more at this present stage. Let's think of it. 600,000 people have fled Libya and only 5,000 have come to Europe. So the big burden is actually not in Europe. It's in the neighboring countries, Tunisia and Egypt. And there Europe could do much more with the international community to help. We haven't even received the funding which is required for this operation. Okay. Uh, Nicola, Nicola, could Europe, the European Union, tear itself apart over immigration? Is Schengen in danger? 
l'Union européenne se déchire. L'Union européenne a déjà été en train de se déchirer pour plusieurs années. Dire que l'Union européenne est en danger est peut-être un peu trop fort, comme est le terme « cold war ». Mais certainement, nous ne prenons plus la même stance. Les pays du Nord ne veulent pas plus d'immigrants que avant. Les pays du Nord qui prennent la majorité des immigrants ne veulent plus prendre la responsabilité de la seule. Les pays dans le milieu trappé entre les deux ne veulent plus garantir la garantie de l'intégration des immigrants, et donc c'est là que le concept de Schengen doit changer. Le concept de Schengen doit changer. Bah, 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 changer mais mais Suad, est Schengen en process de se déchirer Bah oui, elle est en train yes, de se déchirer. Oui, Schengen est se déchirer. Comme j'ai dit tout à l'heure, l'Europe est une merde. Nous ne pouvons pas juste prendre l'oeil de ces pays et ne pas aider les autres pays. Nous avons besoin d'un plan de marche pour aider ces pays. Merci, Suad. Merci, Suad. Daniel, comme outsider, qu'est-ce que tu penses que l'Union européenne peut faire pour lutter contre les immigrants What do you think the European Union could do to deal with the immigrants I think at this stage, more assistance is required, as Fouad said, to the neighboring countries, to northern Africa. At the same time, um, there is a need to accept refugees who were in Libya, who have no, now no place to go to, and for these people, we need places in Europe. So I think this is at least the two minimum things Europe can do at this stage. Nicola, is, uh, is Nicola you could idea, say it's a good idea that Europe should be open to helping people from other countries. But there's the problem of the far right and also of voters here in Europe. There are those who are very critical of this idea of immigration. I think, first of all, we have to define a true immigration policy. At the moment, we're happy to make a few small gestures. There's a border, there's an internal zone without borders, and there are two or three elements of coordination that say the country where the refugees arrive takes care of them. But you can see that this system doesn't work anymore. Either we do nothing at all, that is, block everyone and go back to where we were before, that's not the solution, or, frankly, we define immigration policy together. OK, Suad, I'll put the same question to you, because Mr Berlusconi is coming up against a very strong anti-immigration movement. What now? There's a major problem in Europe, and that's unemployment. 30% of young people throughout all of Europe are jobless. We must solve the big problem of unemployment and help the countries. There are major economic problems throughout Europe, and it's normal that certain parts are not in agreement. Thank you, Daniel. Sir. Daniel, doesn't Europe need immigration? Immigration. I think statistics show that uh, more uh, specific labor force is required in many countries in Europe. But of course, immigration is a matter that countries should be able to determine who comes in and who doesn't. We talk about something very different when we talk about refugees. Um, these are asylum seekers who fled from a country where they are facing persecution. That's why it's so important to make that differentiation between immigrants who are economic migrants and refugees who face life danger in their countries of origin. Okay. Et, et Nicola, contre, talking Nicola, now about je, international je development, development, doesn't this show that the EU development policy has failed? Because there are so many immigrants who want to leave their countries. There will always be immigrants who will want to leave their country. That's not a question of European development policy failing. The question here is to know effectively how much immigration is needed and not to give in to, I would say, a form of populist movement. I agree with Suad, the main problems we face today are unemployment and security, not really immigration. Immigration has been brought up in the past as a principal problem, but it's not in itself a problem. Sometimes it's even a solution. Okay. Uh, is Suad, and you, Suad, as your roots are Moroccan, isn't this a kind of boomerang effect for the countries of Europe, who supported dictators in Arab countries, and now the effects of immigration are returning to them? Yes, it is a boomerang. Nicola is right. We have to help these countries. We've closed our eyes for 30 years and we cannot take them on. Personally, I agree with the Syrian revolution, what's happening now in Syria. The people have to make their own revolution. It's not for us to tackle it. Coming back to the question, Europe needs immigration, but not this immigration. Merci, Suad. Thank you, Suad. That's all for this edition. I'd like to thank our guests. Daniel Andres, Suad Zbai and Nicolas Grovered. I'm Chris Burns, and until our next meeting, thanks for watching The Network. The Network.